Hi everyone and welcome to Polls 2209 Global Security for uh, Externally Enrolled Students. My name is uh, Matt MacDonald. I'm an Associate Professor in the School of Political Science and International Studies and I'm your course coordinator in Polls 2209 for this semester. This is of course uh, a course that's offered both as an internal and external course, so it's a hybrid. Uh, undergraduate advanced level undergraduate course. Um, it's also a course that's offered as part of the Global Issues Program. Uh, more about that in just a moment. Uh, this is the sixth year I've taught the course here in the School of Political Science and International Studies at the University of Queensland. Uh, having taught uh, a global or international security course at uh, various institutions in Australia and the UK, including the University of Warwick, the University of Birmingham, uh, and the University of New South Wales in Sydney. So I've done this a few times before, uh, and uh, hopefully, I think this is now the third year that we've offered this course for uh, external users, and, and hopefully this is just, this video is a, is a brief introduction really to the online component of the course and to what to expect uh, in terms of what resources are available to you and, and how the mode of delivery itself is going to uh, is going to function. So I mentioned that I'm an associate professor here in the school and then I've taught this course uh, for a little while. My area is in security studies broadly defined largely in terms of theoretical engagement with security and international relations. Um, I my research has looked at uh, the relationship between security and environmental change, for example. Uh, and uh, my most recent book is uh, this very attractive text you see behind you, Ethics and Global Security, uh, is um, sort of deals with questions of what uh, does a cosmopolitan ethical approach to security look like, and indeed one that's really focused on the global nature of uh, security and um, it's, it really is, and I mean Christmas and Valentine's Day have just passed, but it really is an ideal gift for that special someone in your life. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so please do keep an eye out for it. Um, okay, so my, um, essentially what I wanted to do is to say, uh, welcome to the, uh, a warm welcome to the course. Because this is a, this is a hybrid course that deals with, that has some, um, you know, at this stage, I think current enrolments are something like we have around 35 to 40 students enrolled on the external version of the course. We have around 135 on the internal version of the course. Essentially, what's going to happen is that uh, I'll be delivering the lectures themselves in a lecture theatre and then capturing that, um, capturing the video and uh, audio of that and uploading that. Uh, for your use. So in effect, this is the one sort of video that's that's directed just at uh, the uh, external users in the course. Um, the major differences, I guess, with the uh, internal course are that, uh, you know, the internal students don't get access to the lecture recordings immediately, whereas you will uh, straight after the lecture itself. There's an expectation that if they're enrolled in the internal version of the course, they'll actually be there. Um, there are, of course, no tutorials um, for you. Uh, you will be required, however, to submit a weekly uh, review of the two core readings for each week, and there's a template and example available on Blackboard. There's a take-home exam instead of the, uh, the central exam, so obviously that means you have more time, you can use your own resources, but rather than being done and dusted inside a couple of hours, you'll have uh, a week in that normal exam period where you'll have to be working on the, um, the take-home exam. Um, those are probably the, the major distinctions. Um, welcome to, uh, I know that the attraction uh, varies depending on uh, why you've decided to take this particular course. Obviously, I mentioned the Global Issues Program. This course is part of the Global Issues Program. We have in the past had students taking this course from um, various corners of the globe. You're very welcome uh, if that applies to you. Other students I know have been attracted to this in the context of this sort of mode of delivery in the context of, um, you know, childcare commitments or work commitments. And again, um, I'm happy to be able to accommodate you 
in this uh, in this sort of mode of delivery. Other students will have taken this because essentially they uh, don't want to darken the doorway of uh, lecture theatres on campus itself. I would like to say, and this is primarily directed at that latter group, <laughs> this isn't, this shouldn't be seen as an easy option. You will have a lot more writing to do than the um, than the uh, internal students, and you will miss out at some level on the uh, dynamic nature of um, the tutorials. Hopefully we'll be able to recreate some of that through the discussion board, but really how successful that is depends on how much effort you uh, put in. But yeah, the weekly reading reviews obviously require you to, really do require you to have read and, and summarise two readings for each uh, week, uh, the equivalent of each week of tutorials. Uh, for the internal uh, students. So there's no sense, I think, that it's a um, an easier option than what you would have otherwise. The key resource for you is, of course, and you've probably stumbled across, across this if you're watching this video now, the key resource for you is, of course, the um, the Blackboard site for the, for the, uh, for the course itself. Um, so if you are online and you can, uh, you can sort of chew gum and walk at the same time. It might be worth uh, pausing the video and, and uh, bringing it up now so that I can uh, walk you through what to uh, what to expect. Um, so the recordings, the lecture recordings are available. If you're looking now at the, um, at, uh, the global security at the external uh, version of the course, you'll see on the uh, left hand side the key the key links the main one the most important is that electronic course profile that the course profile really does have all the formal information about deadlines about expectations around uh, word length around how uh, what's offered each week which uh, lectures we're up to for example that really is a core resource. It's got all the readings available for you there. I would uh, strongly recommend that you are very familiar with the content of the course profile. I'll also be using immediately above that the announcements section. I'll be using that uh, quite extensively given that this is obviously my key way of communicating with you uh, in the course itself. That's relatively self-evident and that will appear as you can see from the home page that will kind of appear uh, in front of you as you um, as the sort of landing page for the course so you should be able to see announcements as they come through. The learning resources page uh, has a series of information it's got uh, readings I've provided some readings for you there it's also got the full reading list that's taken from uh, the course profile so uh, please do have a look at that. There's a link there to the textbook uh, Paul Williams Ed uh, Security Studies textbook, the second edition of that. Um, you can get a copy of that uh, online. Uh, you can also, of course, get it uh, through the university bookstore and other, uh, other bookstores. Um, and there are copies available on the library if you want to come in and, and if you're in a position to do so, of course, uh, come in and photocopy a few. Uh, chapters from that to stand to uh, tide you over until the end of semester. Um, the film series is a link there to the film series. The formal dates for that aren't yet published, but um, the film series is a relatively new initiative that that uh, is about tying elements of um, sort of some of the core themes raised in different film and using that as a way of illustrating core issues around. Uh, in this case, obviously, international relations, but colleagues from across the school have contributed to that series. And essentially, academic staff are asked to nominate films that might be relevant to teaching and introduce those films, make them available to students and encourage their students strongly to attend. Um, I have taken up this opportunity for this semester and The Fog of War uh, is being uh, offered in week three, so provisionally, hopefully Wednesday the 18th of March, to tie in with teaching in this course. And in fact, for the internal students, there's no tutorials in that week to better enable uh, students the time to attend, which also has implications for you in terms of the submission of weekly reading reviews, so bear that in mind. You really are welcome to attend if you have the opportunity to do so. I'd strongly encourage that. Um, there are other films that are going to be useful as well. While We Fight, for example, is in week two, but The Fog of War is one that I've offered and um, those of you who can't be present, I'll do my best to try to find links to make it available to you online if that is at all possible. 
I'll also place uh, details about film clips that we use in the um, course itself there. And below that, you'll see uh, a Twitter feed directly for Polls2209. So using the hashtag Polls2209, I'll be tweeting about things relevant to global security, and I'd really encourage you to do the same. So if you're on Twitter, um, please do use that hashtag when you're talking about international security things as a way of, t of letting colleagues know that there are, and me know that there are interesting debates around security, poss possibly touching on some of the things we've touched on. Uh, in the course. There's also a range of other useful sources there through Twitter. Um, Twitter is a really, uh, and of course you should follow me, I mean that, that goes with it. So, um, you definitely should follow the school account, um, uh, Pulsus Engage. That's the school's official account and has details about events, publications, media appearances by staff, um, and some advancement opportunities for students as well, you know, internships as we find out about them. A lot of that information is also available on the school's Facebook page and, of course, the school website itself. Um, but yes, Twitter is, I was a relatively late convertee to Twitter, but it is an incredibly useful uh, resource. You know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of useless information, of course, on Twitter. You know, if you want to follow Justin Bieber to find out about his decision making around what sort of pants he's going to wear, or actually, I don't know what Justin Bieber tweets about, but he's certainly got a hell of a lot more followers than I have. I can tell you that much. Um, no, but if you choose the right set of um, the right set of people to follow, the right set of institutions to follow, it can be an incredibly useful. Uh, research tool for you. So I'd really strongly encourage you to get onto Twitter. And a reminder, you can dip your toe in as much as you as you want. You, you don't need to uh, be tweeting yourself and letting everyone else know what sort of pants you're wearing, for example. Okay, um, that's it in terms of learning resources. The assessment page, oh, there's a lot of detail on the assessment page about what the different forms of assessment actually are. Um, there is a weekly reading review, as I've mentioned, which is due one week following the corresponding lecture. And I've actually, to make, make it easy, immediately below that, I have uh, the specific dates. You'll notice the date, the 17th of March, is missing. And again, this is to accommodate the film that we'll be offering in that particular, uh, that particular week. Um, the reading review, the, at least that's the provisional, um, that's the provisional date for that. Uh, the reading review is a hurdle requirement, so you really must submit five of these in order to pass the course, and that's really important to, uh, to bear in mind. Um, that's the weekly reading review. There is a reading review worth 20 marks that's due on uh, the 2nd of April, and a major essay due on the 5th of April, the take-home exam uh, due on the 20th of June. Sorry, the major essay is due on the 5th of June. Uh, but all those details are there. There's examples of what a we the weekly reading review would look like, what uh, the, the um, reading review assessment looks like, what the, um, what the criteria sheet for the essay is, and I'll be posting the essay questions up there as well. There's also um, uh, links to submit these via Turnitin, which is, of course, the way in which you should submit these particular forms of assessment. And uh, at the very bottom, there's details about plagiarism and avoiding plagiarism. Um, please do make sure that you're very careful about the way in which you reference um, pieces of assessment. This is absolutely crucial and it's really important to avoid that and prevent a situation where we might have to penalise you, um, including you know, potential disciplinary measures. So everyone, I think, wants to avoid that. Um, in terms of uh, the other resource, uh, resources to bear in mind, actually submitting, um, if, you, uh, if you're looking again at the instruction on the, le at the things on the left hand side, you'll see discussion board there. You should look at the discussion board resource. Um, I'll be posting questions and issues for comment on there, but really I'm not going to be driving that, uh, that discussion in a lot of ways that's up to you to take on. And I really would encourage people to put discussion points to engage with each other through this mechanism. It's not formally assessed, so there's no requirement that you do it, but obviously the more you put into that, the more you'll, uh, the more you'll get out. Other library links are below that. You can see um, weekly reading reviews. There's a t 
toggle there at the at the um, second last of the uh, of the uh, subheadings there on the left side. Weekly reading reviews. That's how you go about submitting your weekly reading reviews. Just follow that um, follow that guideline. And a request to um, please uh, try, if you can, to, to copy and paste your blog entry, your um, weekly review into the actual um, space provider rather than um, upload an attachment. Um, uploading an attachment can take a lot longer for me to actually navigate through and read them all. So if you can actually just put them within the text that um, is available to you, that would be uh, very much appreciated. Um, below that, there's a link for videos. That's obviously where this particular video uh, will be will be linked to. I'd also encourage students to um, upload their own videos, introducing themselves, why they're taking the course. Um, tell us a bit about yourself and your background. That would be, I think, a really useful way of sort of creating something like a virtual community, which would be very nice. Um, so please do take that opportunity um, to submit your weekly uh, to submit. A uh, recording about about who you are, for example. A couple of things I should mention about assessment. Uh, just to be clear, I'll mention this in the first lecture as well. But you know, every I'm sure every uh, uh, teacher that you've worked with has different sort of things that they're on the lookout for, and sometimes these aren't necessarily stated. I just wanted to be clear that there's a couple of things I'm particularly um, hard about. Uh, one is uh, extensions and one is word length. So um, in terms of uh, extensions, for example, my view is that being aware at this point of what due dates are that you can manage, especially competing tasks. I mean, obviously, if, some, if something bad happens in terms of health or well-being of yourself or a loved one, then that's something we'll, uh, we'll of course, be able to work around. There's no issue there. But really, I'd take a dim view of people who say, well, I've got lots of assignments due at the same time or, um, you know, I've had all these work commitments. My view is that you're taking on the responsibility to meet these deadlines at this point. You're well aware of when the deadlines are and part of the skill set we're trying to develop is get, getting you to manage um, your various work commitments to ensure you're able to submit work on time. So please do bear that in mind that I'm not necessarily an easy touch when it comes to questions of extensions. The other thing is word length. I mentioned this uh, very briefly that essentially to me writing to a word length is a skill. Um, you, you will be penalised if you go in particular over the word length. I think if you're significantly under a word length you're probably penalising yourself but going over we will be taking a very close look at that and you will lose marks if you're uh, more than 10% over the word length for any piece of assessment, so please do bear that in mind. Um, my office hours, obviously this may not be relevant if you're taking the course uh, from, say, Finland, for example, where actually it'll be difficult to visit my office in room 509 of the GPN uh, General Purpose North 3 building on the St. Lucia campus, but uh, those of you who are able at times to make that, um, my office hours are 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Brisbane time, obviously, on uh, Tuesdays uh, within semester. So that means that at those times I'll be in my office. Um, while that might not be relevant for you in terms of actually physically coming, that's also a time when you can ring me. Um, so my uh, phone number in my office number is plus six one if you're ringing from outside Australia, zero seven three three six five three zero. Or two, and uh, you can also Skype. So my um, UQ handle, my Skype uh, name is Matt McDonald UQ. So if you um, if you want to Skype me, I'll be available then to talk to you about any issues you have regarding the course. There's going to be a lot more information made available um, in the first lecture itself. Uh, this was just a way of introducing you to some of the distinct elements of learning online and I really did want to take the opportunity to welcome you warmly into the course. It's good to have you on board and uh, yeah, hopefully if, you, if there are any issues, please do feel free to get in touch uh, with me um, as soon as you like. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye.